All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about selective incorporation. Won't you join me? All right, so incorporation is the single most important concept in this unit. In fact, I would go so far as to say it's one of the single most important concepts in all of AP government. What it did was radically transform how we interpret the Bill of Rights who the Bill of Rights applies to, and how our freedoms are protected. It's a lot of importance for one single vocab word. I'm sure you'd agree with me. So what we want to do and consider selective incorporation is to start with the text of the 14th Amendment. And specifically, we want to look at what's known as the Due Process Clause. All right, so the Due Process Clause says that, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So that's the part we're concerned with. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Now, that might sound a little familiar to you. If you remember back in the Fifth Amendment, it essentially said the same thing. It said the government couldn't take away your life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The important thing here in the 14th Amendment is that now it says that nor shall any state. Because remember, the Bill of Rights originally only limited the power of the federal government. Think about the first words of the First Amendment. It says, Congress shall make no law. Didn't say anything about the states. So what this means is that initially, and the Supreme Court actually ruled this in 1833 in a case called Barron v. Baltimore, that only the federal government was restricted by the Bill of Rights. States could totally take away your free speech, your right to bear arms, they could punish you in a cruel and unusual way. They were not restricted by the Bill of Rights at all. So it wasn't just that they you know, couldn't limit. They could just completely get rid of if they wanted to. That's no longer true today. And it's because of how we interpret that due process clause in the 14th Amendment. So what is it about that line that's going to lead to such a dramatic change in our interpretation? Well, there's a couple words there. So first was the state word, like we mentioned, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, property. But then it's that word liberty. So for the first 50 years or so after this 14th Amendment was ratified and became the law, nobody really thought anything of it. Selective incorporation was still not a thing yet. About 50 years later, though, in a case called Gitlow versus New York, and you don't need to know the name of that case, don't worry, what the Supreme Court discovered in this case, because what happened was a man was arrested by the state of New York for promoting some kind of communist group, and they said, no, you're not allowed to do that. That violates our state law. And that man, Gitlow, claimed that he had free speech, that the First Amendment protected his right. And what the Supreme Court ruled in this case was that free speech is, in fact, something that states are required to follow and that states cannot take away your free speech. Why not? What they used was that line in the 14th Amendment, where it says, life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Essentially, what they said was that free speech is fundamental to liberty. It is a liberty. And the 14th Amendment says, states cannot deprive you of liberty. Therefore, key fundamental liberties, like speech, can no longer be deprived of you by states. That's a really, really important thing that they've done here. So now states have to be restricted in the same way as the federal government when it comes to these fundamental liberties. So that's what incorporation means. Incorporation is the application of the Bill of Rights to the states. It's requiring or limiting states by the Bill of Rights the same way that the federal government is limited by the Bill of Rights. But notice that we talked about selective incorporation. So what's that selective part? Well, this means that this has been done on a case-by-case -case basis. So it has not been done at one single time. So there is not a moment in time, for example, where all of a sudden the entire Bill of Rights now applies to the states and they can no longer take away any of those rights. That did not happen. This has been a process that has been ongoing since 1925. In fact, earlier this year, in 2019, the part of the Eighth Amendment that prevents excess of bail was just now incorporated in 2019. 
the right to bear arms was just incorporated in 2010. So we see that this has been a process from 1925 starting with free speech and then moving throughout the decades as we've gotten more and more of our rights incorporated. So this is done by the Supreme Court. I also want you to notice how this changes the balance of power between states and the federal government. So initially, states could restrict rights. They could take away a person's right to bear arms. They could take away your free speech. They no longer can. So states have gotten weaker because of incorporation. The federal government and the judicial branch have gotten stronger because the courts are the ones that are doing this to the states and making them follow the Bill of Rights. So this has been a hugely important development over the last hundred years or so. Now, one of your required case examples of this is McDonald versus Chicago. And this case is from 2010. So this is a very recent case, relatively speaking. And what this case did was it incorporated the individual right to bear arms. So if you recall from the other video, DC versus Heller said you have an individual right to bear arms, but that only protected you from the federal government. States could still restrict or in fact completely get rid of your right to bear arms. Following this case though, McDonald versus Chicago, they have now incorporated the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment, so states can no longer take away your right to bear arms. So this is, again, we see that change in that balance of power. Uh, so this is a good example of selective incorporation. All right, so until next time, this has been a La Money Production. All right, thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Help me out. Hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys next time.